Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, I call it from denial to fear because I think that shift in sentiment is going on right now. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. But first of all, I want to wish everyone a happy new year and wish you a healthy and very prosperous new year. Uh, this last year was an amazing year, uh, one for the ages, but I think uh, this, this coming year is going to be extremely volatile and uh, even more uh, dramatic than what we saw here in uh, 2022. All right, let's start off by looking at side by side with the Dow, the S&P, the NASDAQ composite. So the uh, Dow Industrials, as I grab from my notes here, was uh, down 57 points for the week. The S&P 500 was down five points and the NASDAQ composite was down 31 points. Now, kind of a holiday shortened week, kind of volume was a lot lighter than uh, what we usually get. And uh, we may get a little bit more of the same, although the new year is going to be kicking in this coming week. But again, it's going to be another four day week with probably many people still taking some days off, etc. But that's where we're at. It's kind of interesting. A uh, little bit of sideways inside type of trading ranges in the week that we just finished, except for over here. On the Nasdaq composite. Now we did just finish. These are all weekly charts. We did just finish monthly charts. So I'm going to look at that. Let me go to the. I'm going to walk through both the Dow, the S&P, and the Nasdaq composite today. And I'm going to walk through. I'm going to go over here and take a look at the weekly and daily. Uh, on Friday, the Dow was down 73 and a half points. So. Just looks like just a lot of consolidation compression going on here over the last several days. Now, when we look at the month of December, it was down 1,442 points. So pretty good pullback in here, but not, you know, it's hard to say, okay, that, that's not a bearish engulfing type candle. It is a down candle, uh, but we'll see whether or not we get the follow through that we're looking for in here. I expect that we will. But when we take a look at the S&P 500, a little bit different scenario. S&P was down 10 points on Friday. Uh, when we look at the monthly view of the S&P 500, this was a bearish engulfing type of candle. Completely engulfed the body of the previous week. But again, you need to see follow through down here. We need to break last week's low and continue to push to the downside. That's what I'm expecting. That's what the LA Wave count is expecting in here. We'll look at all of that in just a minute. And then the next one, I'm going to go back to the weekly here and take a look at the NASDAQ composite, which let's see on Friday. Let me move this over down 11.6 on Friday. And again, let's take a look at the monthly view here. Not only did this engulfed the previous week, it literally engulfed the body of the previous two weeks. So pretty negative price action going on in here in the uh, with the NASDAQ composite. OK, so let me go back to the weekly view and let's go back to the Dow Industrials and we're going to look at the Elliott Wave picture. OK, here's the picture of the Dow Industrials Elliott Wave uh, account that we've got on the weekly. I'm going to come back to these down arrows and up arrows, and I'll talk about that in a minute or in a few minutes. But right now, I just want to show you what we're looking at with the Dow. Now, don't worry about where Wave 4 is, Wave 5. This is an estimate on Wave 3 based on what? Based on the size of Wave 1 and Wave 2. And for right now, I've got them labeled as intermediate wave. I think that's going to hold, but it, depending on the size of the wave, how it plays out, the wave labeling in terms of the actual degree may change. But right now, I think it, these are intermediate waves to the downside. So we've got this wave one, wave two is complete. And so now I am looking for this to break down out of this channel with a third wave like it usually does. And I think we are in the beginning phases of that. Although I must say it's the Dow that has a lot of catch up to do to the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ composite. Now, when we drill down and take a look at the daily chart, here's where we're at. We're looking at the first five little waves down in here uh, to complete minor wave one. And again, within intermediate wave three, there'll be five minor waves. 
right now we need to get the first minor wave. So this is where we're at. I think we are in, I think we're in the beginning phases of the third minute wave down and we'll see if this gets underway this coming week as I expect it to, uh, to do. So let's take a look now at the, uh, the S&P 500 uh, Elliott wave count. Okay, it is the same wave count on the S&P 500. Okay, except it's progressed a little further along than the Dow. Now the Dow kind of chopped sideways. It pulled back up quite high, back up into slightly took out the August high. This is the wave count we've got on the S&P 500 that we are in the beginning phases of minor wave three to the downside of intermediate wave three. This is a path forward. And uh, let me check uh, wave three. Okay, this is the neighborhood where I would be expecting a uh, minor wave three to end if it is a normal length three, and that's based off of wave one and wave two. Okay, so as this continues to come down, it's going to break out of this channel. The real question is, is it, how fast is it going to do this? Is it going to really fall out of bed, or is it going to chop around and chop its way down? Remember, you know, in third waves, they need to be impulsive waves. They can't be, uh, you know, uh, ending diagonals or leading diagonals or any of that kind of stuff with overlap. They need to be pure impulsive wave structures in wave threes. Okay, and that is, that goes for intermediate wave three and minor wave three in here. So that is the picture that we've got on the S and P 500. Let's take a look at the daily. See a little bit closer where we are. Similar kind of thing as to the Dow. I'm going to get rid of this view on the daily because I highlighted that. There we go uh, on a on a uh, intraday chart. But right now I think we are in Manu Wave Three. We've been doing a lot of sideways here this last week, just a lot of chopping around back and forth. Uh, and so now I am looking for this to break on down and uh, and push in a much stronger manner, a little more like this push that came down here earlier in December. Okay, let's take a look at the NASDAQ composite. Okay, the NASDAQ composite, this is what we've got here. Same wave count, intermediate wave three, minor wave one, two, and three. And of course, this has been uh, much weaker than the other two the bounces that we got for intermediate wave two were nearly as strong as what we saw in the Dow and the S&P 500. But this is what I'm expecting. And when you look over here, uh, this is the March 2020 low. Yeah, I'm, I'm not expecting the March 2020 low to hold by any means. And I wouldn't be surprised to see it taken out most likely, maybe in this intermediate wave three. I'd say there's a pretty good chance that intermediate wave three is going to take that out. We'll see. We'll see how fast we start to come down here in minor three of intermediate wave three. When we take a look at the daily view, here's what's going on with that. We had a little channel for wave two, minor wave two, a little zigzag pattern, A, B, C, and now we've broken down out of that. Uh, this was a pretty strong close on Friday or Wednesday of last week. Was that? Yeah, it was Wednesday. Okay, that was the lowest close since sometime in 2020. Uh, so right now, you know, we got a little pop on Thursday, but right now I'm expecting this to continue to keep moving down in uh, minute wave three of minor three. Okay, so that is the picture on the NASDAQ composite. Right now, everything seems to be in the down direction. Uh, let's take a look at uh, the high yield bond fund. And then I'm going to come back to those arrows that I talked about. So this is the weekly view. Let me go. go uh, let's not worry about the LA Wave picture. <laughs> Don't ignore that because I have not updated an LA Wave count on the high yield bond fund. Here's what I look at. Matter of fact, I haven't even looked at the LA Wave count on the high yield bond fund in forever. I just, I just don't focus. I focus on purely the technicals, the moving average view, the price action, etc. And here's what I've seen with this. It was up six cents on Friday, down 76 cents for the week. But when it broke down out of this little channel, I thought this was pretty negative and a pretty big risk off signal that we're getting 
uh, on the, the high yield bond fund. Usually this is either risk on or risk off. And right now we are back to risk off. Uh, and that's pretty much the message that we got all this week. Although Thursday and Friday, we got a little bit of a bounce, but they're all both still inside the trading range of Wednesday's big move to the downside. So now I've drawn a trend line in here. I'm not expecting that to hold, and I'm watching for a break of that trend line for a resumption of the move to the downside. Okay, that is the high yield bond fund. Now I want to talk about the put to call ratios. And before I do that, I'm going to go back to the Dow Industrials. And I'm going to go to the wave count here. And I'm going to pull this, this chart up right here. Okay. And I'm going to talk about this for a minute. Here's where the put to call ratios are right now. Okay. Here's what we've been seeing all of a sudden. Look at these one day shots of extreme readings. And it actually started in November. Okay. These have been amazing in terms of when I pulled up the intraday data, um, we're seeing it usually in the middle of the day hour. I, I have a 65 minute chart, so it's the 1145 a.m. hour central time, middle of the day. All of a sudden we get a huge spike and they have a tendency to be about uh, one week apart. Look at it. Wednesday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. Wednesday, got another one fairly quickly, but in terms of big one, Wednesday, something is going, somebody's taking large, very large positions. And again, this is equity only, okay? This is not indices. So this is just in pure stocks, large put position, large buying. What I wanted to point out is what I'm getting in terms of a 10 day moving average, when it gets above one, I color coded very dark green. OK, so the lightest green is in the 80s, a little bit darker shade of green in the 90s. And then I, I have never in 16 years of data that I have, I have never seen a 10 day moving ratio, 10 day moving averages over 1.0 in terms of what we're seeing right now. So this is something that we've never seen before. And. Uh, let me uh, show you. Here's where we're at right now. This is where we're getting this. But so if you think, well, Joe, that should be a, a turning signal, etc. I'm not so sure about that because this is pretty extreme type activity. And guess what? You see these up arrows right here? Let me show you what show you those. I'm going to show you December 1st. OK, and I'm going to pull this down, get this in so you can see this. You see this? readings of 10 day readings in the 0.39. I had never seen that before until December 8th, 9th and 10th, when we were getting these kind of low put to call ratios. And when was that? December 8th, 9th and 10th. Right here. Right here. And then the second one we got in January. As we we're seeing extremely low put to call ratios continue. Look at all these readings in the low 40s. Say I colored them, you know, purple in the 30s, the dark red in the 40s, low 40s, lighter red in 45 to 50. So I had a little scheme that I'm doing to help so I can look at it from a, you know, from a dashboard type of thing and just have the, the color jump out at me. Well, so right here is what we're talking about in terms of the uh, very low put to call ratios. That was occurring right here, right in the middle of minor three of intermediate wave five of the fifth primary wave up of cycle wave five. OK, the very end, the extreme bullishness in here. We, so but the whole point is we got these extreme readings. We continue to push higher and higher and higher and higher. And here we are in the beginning stages of intermediate wave three to the downside. And we're now getting extreme put to call ratios that I've never seen before, at least in 16 years worth of data. Let's put it that way, back to November of 2006. So it's going to be really, really interesting uh, to see what happens in here and how this plays out and, and, and how it continues in terms of the readings, honestly. All right, that's it for this, uh, for this video for this weekend. 
and we're off and running for the new year this coming week. I hope everyone has a great year. We'll talk to you on the next video.